Hello everyone, welcome to Documentary Pulse with Mo. Here is another video on African history and culture. Today we will be talking about the greatest lies told about the African continent. This really became one of the most popular lies told about African people. The idea was that Africans were backward savages with no civilization, with the exception of Egypt, which was consistently placed outside the sphere of African cultural achievement. Civilizations like ancient Ghana in West Africa weren't privy to much observation, despite being known for their vast wealth and powerful military, which Muslim writers wrote about. Archaeological reports highlight ancient stone settlements believed to be precursors to Sudanic civilization in the region, not to mention the art of the Europa people, who single-handedly forced the world to acknowledge African ingenuity and intelligence. Some tried to assign the development of such works to ancient European travelers, there's just too much to ignore when it comes to African civilization. The dark continent narrative doesn't have any ground to stand on when we consider ancient Meroitic civilization and the great Kushite rulers, who started what some scholars call the African Renaissance, which was perhaps the first renaissance in human history. And let's not forget the largest stone structure south of the Sahara. Great Zimbabwe is just one of many stone structures in the southern African region. Another persistent misconception in Western consciousness is the belief that Africans had no writing systems and solely relied on oral communication. In reality, Africans employed diverse methods of communication, with oral transmission being just one of them. One of the more well-known writing forms in West Africa is known as Nsibidi. It is believed to have originated among the Ikoi people of Nigeria. This writing form is primarily viewed as ideographic or pictographic conveying messages through symbols. Interestingly, many African writing forms were originally created for specific groups of people and were not intended for public dissemination. For example, Egyptian hieroglyphs were initially known only among the priesthood. This is also true for the secret writing form of the Songhai people, who used ideograms to communicate within a secret society or religious group. Remarkably, this writing form was only revealed to the public in 2010 by a Songhai scholar named Hasimi Maiga. When discussing African scripts, we can mention the Meroitic script of the Kushites, which to this day has not been fully deciphered. This is quite disappointing, as deciphering it could have shed light on Queen Amanarina's triumphant interaction with the Romans, where her primary objectives were met in a treaty. Even Southern Africa has hidden gems when it comes to writing forms. Joao de Barros, a distinguished Portuguese analyst of the mid-16th century, wrote an important description concerning the discovery of a writing form in one of the vassal kingdoms of the Munamutapla Empire called Batua. De Barros noted, Over the gate of the building is an inscription which neither the Moorish traders who were there nor others learned in inscriptions could read, nor does anyone know in what character it is written. Unfortunately, we have limited information about what Joao de Barros saw, but from his perspective, it seems clear that he viewed it as a unique indigenous writing form of the region. Not even the Swahili traders who accompanied him could decipher it, and sadly we never hear much more about this. All this discussion serves a purpose, to highlight the numerous lies told about Africa and to emphasize how grossly inaccurate they are. The curse of Ham is a misnomer because the curse was really bestowed upon Canaan. Jewish scholars believe that Ham was the ancestor of all black or African people, and this idea was adopted by Arabs. Then it was strategically broadened by Europeans to justify the enslavement and demonization of African people. This is the greatest lie that has been told about Africans because it didn't just have physical and psychological repercussions, it also added a spiritual component. Some people within the black community actually believe that it's true, and in their attempts at lifting this curse through achievement, acceptance, or spirituality, they turned into concerned, aimless wanderers heightening confusion and self-hate within the black community. It's one of the most powerful invisible enemies the black communities have as Afro-descended people, one that cannot be tangibly debunked. And although the belief in it has diminished greatly, the residuals may still be felt because no matter our spiritual beliefs today, many of us were raised with this dark paradigm. So, I think it's important for us to speak on it, especially so that we won't pass this baggage on to the next generation. Anyway, guys, I'm all out. Do you think this is the greatest lie that's ever been told about African people? Let me know in the comment section.